Well, it's great to be with you. As Father Ron mentioned, I'm a deacon here in the Cleveland Diocese, and I'm, I serve down at Holy Family in Stowe, uh, not too far from here. And I'm sure, like you all, we've been talking a lot about the visitation of the angels recently. And as you probably are aware of, God was, has been concerned about things on the earth, so he sent a couple angels down to scope things out, find out how things are going. Angels looked around, they came back to the Lord, and they said, Lord, it's bad. It's just, it, life is tough. For those who are faithful, it is just the, the world and the culture, and, and there's so much war, there's so much division, families are struggling, people are struggling. Lord, there's probably only 5% of the people on the planet that truly really love you and want to serve you, and it's just, it's just terrible. So the Lord thought, what, what can I do? What can I do to just encourage faith? And God said, I'm going to send an email. I'm going to send an email out to that 5%. I'm going to encourage them. I'm going to bless them. And that's going to strengthen their faith. And you know what that email said? Didn't any of you get that email? <laughs> Father Turner. Ooh. And Stowe, we got the amen now, okay. <laughs> so what if, what if God did send you an email to just encourage you in your faith? What would it say? I think to all of us, we're all different, in different situations, different life, and for me, I think that email would say, to the faithful in this land who love the Lord, now is the time. Now is the time for the laity of the Catholic Church to awaken. Now is the time. St. Joseph's Parish, I am so encouraged by how you guys are leaning into the idea of being missionary disciples out in the midst of the world. From the way you've run Alpha for years, from the search to, to now the mission formation that you're doing with an organization called the Evangelical Catholic that I'm on staff with. Our mission formation process with the Evangelical Catholic empowers people to discover their unique mission that God is calling them to do. For 24 years, the EC has worked with hundreds of parishes around the world. And currently, we work with about 200 here in the United States. And this year, we are forming and training over 4,000 lay people to be missionary disciples where they are. And it's been a blessing to be working with St. Joseph over this last year. Because the laity are waking up to their call to make disciples in the midst of this world. You know, and the, the scriptures at the end of the liturgical season are always a wake-up call. As we go towards these final weeks in ordinary time, the scriptures are talking about the end times. They're talking about life and death. And it's really a, a liturgical wake-up call to all of us. And so in this first reading from Sirach, we have some wisdom literature where Sirach is saying, the Lord is God of justice and who knows no favorites. Now, looking at the bulk of wisdom literature, I kind of want to argue with that. You know, God does seem to like the wise rather than the foolish. He does seem to like the just better than the wicked. He seems to hear the cry of the poor more than the belly aching of the rich. God clearly, I think, wants us to live for him internally. His, his justice is attracted to a quality of spirit and a quality of heart that is measured not by the things we do, but by our quality of heart and spirit towards him. Humility trumps arrogance because God's perspective is that we are all sinners. I'm reminded of a story of Emperor Charlemagne. Charlemagne was the greatest light of what we call the Dark Ages. He lived in the year 900. He was a person that came and saw the conflict within Europe, all the tribes that were fighting. He conquered them all and he brought them together. He initiated the Holy Roman Empire and he spread Christendom throughout all of Europe. But also along with that, Charlemagne was a lover of literature. He was a lover of education. We even get our three-crop rotation from Charlemagne. That's something he initiated. 
and he loved architecture as well and beauty in the church. He was by far the greatest man of his time. When Charlemagne passed away, his funeral procession lasted for three days. And in the city of Occam, as, he, as this procession processed for three days, they finally came to the cathedral where the bishop stood there to welcome this great emperor into his final rest. And Charlemagne's casket was on this huge chariot. And in front of his casket, in front of this, this huge procession, was this beautiful white horse. And a herald on this horse proclaimed the deeds of Charlemagne. And he gets to the steps of the cathedral. And the herald said, here is Charlemagne the Great, emperor of the known world, who bids enter into God's kingdom. The bishop stood there and said, I know him not. The herald was taken aback and he said, well, here is Charles, a man of great faith, of great love for the poor, who bids enter into God's house. And the bishop shook his head and said, I know him not. And finally, the herald said, here is Charles, a man who begs enter into God's kingdom. And the bishop stepped aside and enter, said, enter ye into your father's kingdom. That story and the story of this tax collector and this Pharisee in the gospel today, it reminds us that we are all sinners before God. And hearing that story, you know, we want to distinguish ourselves, don't we? We can easily say, you know what, yeah, I, I recognize that, that, that I'm a sinner before God. But, and that's a big one. Say, but you know what, I, I come to church. I come to church on a beautiful day in October when it's 75 degrees. And it's sunny outside. But you know what, I'm faithful. I've been faithful to my wife, to my spouse, to my children. I give money to the diocesan appeals. I give money to the, to the poor. I come to Mass. I don't use bad language. I vote pro-life. I'm a good person. Behind all of that, I think we're asking a question. What more does God want? And perhaps we see a glimpse of that in this beautiful message from Timothy today. Paul says... I am being poured out as a libation for the gospel. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Recently, Monsignor James Shea wrote a book called From Christendom to the Apostolic Age. And he argues that in Christendom, the general culture aligns with the values and the culture of the church, and it thrives together. But in an, in an apostolic age, the culture begins to go errant, away from the values and the culture of the gospel. Monsignor Shea argues, and I believe it's true that we are entering into this apostolic age. It used to be uncool to be a Christian. I remember that when I was in high school. But now it's not only uncool, it's weird. To some, it is wrong. And in some places, it's unlawful. How are we going to live as people of faith in an apostolic age? One reflection on that is going to happen this week. So Jason Simon, the president of the Evangelical Catholic, is coming here to do a mission. Jason is a, a wonderful man. He has spent 17 years ministering on Catholic campuses and Catholic parishes, helping to form the laity as missionary disciples. And Jason is coming with the theme of to discover the one thing necessary. And I want to encourage all of you to come to the mission this Wednesday and hear Jason's address. It's a powerful message. There's childcare available for those who have kids. We also want to encourage you to RSVP through the church's website. That lets us know how many people are coming, especially those with kids. And then also, several times this month and once in November, there's going to be some come and see sessions. For about a half hour, you can come and learn about the Reach More mission process that the parish is engaging with the Evangelical Catholic. I firmly believe that we are moving into an apostolic age. 
And I firmly believe that the answer to that is the laity of the Catholic Church awakening to their mission, awakening to their roles as missionary disciples out in the midst of the world. How do we prepare ourselves for that? Well, we listen to the Apostle Paul. We pour out ourselves as a libation to God. We give him everything that we have, holding nothing back. We journey together as brothers and sisters, like the early apostles did in an apostolic age. And I think that's how we wake up. I don't know what you thought that email said from the Lord, whatever it was. But I firmly believe that now is the time for the lady to awaken. And I pray that all of us continue to do that. May God bless you all.